We've heard a lot about how parents and students are struggling with adapting to new rules to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in the classroom. Well, CBC News journalists in Atlanta, Canada and in eastern Ontario sent questionnaires to thousands of teachers, finding out how they're feeling two months into this extraordinary school year. They got replies from more than 2,000 teachers. And as you're going to hear, many of them say they're worried about the quality of education students are getting, worried about their own mental health as well. Deanna Sumanak johnson has been involved closely in the project. She is live with me from Toronto. What did you learn from the teachers in this questionnaire, Deanna? Well, the amazing thing about this questionnaire, Heather, and this was spearheaded by uh, CBC's investigative unit, is that it really offers us a glimpse into the minds of teachers in this most extraordinary and difficult year. I will say on a personal level, when I try to find teachers for my stories, it's often quite difficult because, of course, they do have unions. They also have school boards that are their employers. So what this questionnaire offers us is, is, is kind of an unfiltered look into what is going through our respondents' minds. As you said, just over 2,000 teachers uh, answered. And uh, here are some of the things that really stood out for us. About one-third of respondents considered either changing profession or retiring. So that is a really significant number. That tells you uh, just uh, sort of how high the stress levels are. And this is something that was also revealed in many other questions. So what are some of the things that could have possibly contributed to those stress levels. We have talked a lot about the battle to reduce class sizes. When we spoke to these people, again, this is in, in, in six different provinces, when we spoke to them, we learned that uh, uh, class sizes, 68% of respondents have said that their class sizes were the same size as pre-pandemic. So that could be a possible contributing uh, factor to that stress. Uh, some of the other things that came out, Heather, was uh, uh, in one of the questions, they were asked to rank their highest concerns and the thing that came out clearly on top was a concern for their mental and physical health again that ties into that high number of teachers that are considering uh, uh, retiring or changing professions uh, teachers who responded to our questionnaire that is so really it offers us a glimpse into the mind of some teachers in Canada uh, who are teaching in class and online in this really difficult year Universal feelings, really interesting mm -hmm. capturing that, Deanna. Those are the findings, but let's get some first-person reaction because I know you've been speaking to teachers, and what have they been telling you? So a few of the teachers who actually completed the questionnaire, uh, they obviously had the right to anonymity, but a few of them uh, did want to talk to us. A and what we found was really extraordinary. What kept on coming through was the contrast, the gap between those ideal regulations, following all the rules to minimize the risk uh, of an outbreak or exposure, and then the class reality. I mean, class size is obviously one of those things. Uh, another question, uh, Heather, that, uh, that many people have answered, the highest group of respondents have said that there is less than one meter of distance uh, between uh, kids in their class, and that for the highest group of respondents said that for most of the time in the day, they cannot keep distance between themselves and their students, either not very often or not at all. So this is significant. These are real contributors to that stress. I think another thing is uh, that, you know, teachers are told to distance from the kids. Some of the people we spoke to have said, look, if a kid is five or six years old, uh, I'm a mom of a little one, so I can, I can concur with this on, on a personal level. It's really difficult uh, to tell them to keep distance from their peers. Is a teacher supposed to keep distance if a five-year-old falls down and scrapes his or her knee? So this difficulty between the teacher's desire uh, to, to protect the kids and the best practices, on the other hand, the contrast between the two is something that emerged from a lot of people we spoke to. Lisa Levitan is a teacher in the uh, Ottawa Carleton School Board who actually was one of the respondents to our questionnaire. And here is what she had to say about what her fellow teachers are telling her. She's a union steward in her school. Have a listen. As a steward for the school, it's been very difficult because teachers have been coming to me, letting me know how upset they are, how stressed out they are. They're not eating, they're not sleeping, they're very overwhelmed. And quite frankly, some have already taken a year without pay or taken a year of sick leave or just decided this is not the job for them altogether. 
There you go, Heather. And really, uh, a lot of the people we spoke to uh, that we interviewed uh, have said they love their job. They don't want to leave their job, but that it is this uh, most extraordinary uh, year where their desire to teach is really being tested. Heather. Deanna, thank you. Such an interesting report. Appreciate it. Deanna Sumanak Johnson. So those are the numbers. And as you heard, some of the stories from educators who spoke to Deanna. But we'd love to hear from you on this particular issue. If you want to share your experience with the education system during COVID-19, you can email us education-talk at cbc.ca.